Sorry about that delay. I forgot I didn't have my mic on. But hey, welcome again. Uh, we're so glad that you're here to worship with us. I want to say hello uh, to all of those that are joining us online. We're in a, a series about relationships, uh, week number three, and uh, lessons from a butcher shop because I grew up in a butcher shop. If if this is your first Sunday uh, with us, so uh, I got to explain that title a bit. But I watched my dad over the years interact with people and learn so much about dealing with people and relationships. And I want to share just some of those principles. But really, those principles come from the Word of God because my dad had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and really how he interacted with people uh, was based on that relationship. So that's the priority. I uh, want to make you aware of our, our, of our app, Camp Nazarene Connect. Uh, on the app, if you go to virtual church and then notes, uh, all the notes are there from this morning's message, a fill in the blanks. Uh, so I want to make you aware of that. And also, again, just to help you uh, throughout the week, uh, we uh, have daily challenges for you. Uh, uh, each day, a push notification just go to settings in your phone and turn on relationships uh, and you can uh, access those push notifications. And also we have a Bible reading plan. So just a daily verse that'll help you uh, with what we're talking about today. So I'd encourage you uh, to jump in on those uh, things as well. So the title of this morning's message is the rarest need uh, consistency. I think consistency is something that's very rare uh, today. Uh, I love the fact that our mission hasn't changed at our church, that we wanna help people know God and find freedom, uh, discover purpose and make a difference. And our systems to deliver the mission are our Sunday service and small groups and growth track and serve teams. And we're just committed to this life-giving culture where we love God, we love others, we strive for excellence and we choose joy. And we have this ministry vision for the future. We're gonna be outward focused and uh, we're going to be generous. We're going to have multiple services so more people can worship and serve and invite. And, and we're, we're just going to uh, uh, continue uh, to use technology to reach more uh, people for Jesus than ever before. I got a message this week from one of our church members who uh, had a sick son. And they stayed home last week and watched it online. And then they shared it uh, with one of their family members. And the message really helped that family member. And so technology is continuing uh, just to spread the reach of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, Dan, why do you keep talking about these things over and over and over again? Because what's really amazing in today's society, and today's culture is consistency. <laughs> you know, just saying the same thing and knowing why we're here and what we're doing and how we're going to do it. It's very rare, but it's really what builds healthy relationships. If you want to have healthy relationships, consistency uh, is the key. So I want to open up with uh, this verse, uh, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's the same. God is consistent. Our God is the same. He doesn't change. And because our God is the same, he doesn't change. He has some principles that will never change when it comes to relationships because consistency leads to security. I think we would all love to have more security in our relationships. I was fortunate enough to grow up at a home where I had a lot of consistency. My mom would tuck me in every night. Uh, she'd say prayers with me. I'll, I'll just never forget it. it. It stays with me. My dad, although he worked very hard and got home late at times, he was still home uh, every night. My parents, uh, they took me to church from when I was just born, an infant, right? I, I had that consistency in my life. And so I had a very secure upbringing. Uh, and, and, and that's helped me to be a secure person because consistency leads to security. But the opposite side of the coin is inconsistency leads to insecurity. I realize a lot of people weren't fortunate enough to have what I had growing up. Uh, maybe their mother wasn't around, or maybe their dad wasn't around, or maybe there was a struggle in the home with, with alcohol, and maybe, you know, you didn't know what dad was going to be home that night. Uh, maybe uh, in your life, uh, there just wasn't a lot of consistency. It was very inconsistent, and, and because of that, uh, you have some insecurity issues. Uh, you're insecure as a person, and that's affecting not only you, but it's affecting the relationships that you're in, because that just doesn't go away. But I got good news for you this morning uh, that God can bring healing to your life. He can bring security to your life. He can bring hope to your life. God can bring, bring consistency where there's been inconsistency. So there's hope, church. There's good news this morning, church. I was uh, looking this week at what culture was saying about relationships. So I went to Vogue, uh, pop culture, right? Doesn't get any more pop culture than Vogue. So there was an article that Vogue had put out about 
about the uh, top five uh, deal breakers in relationships. These are behaviors that will just break the deal when it comes uh, to a relationship. And, and the point was that five uh, years ago, or seven years ago, in 2015, uh, these were the top five deal-breaking behaviors in relationships. So if you're in a romantic relationship, this would break the deal. If you had bad hygiene, all right, if you didn't put on deodorant, all right, if you didn't take a shower, brush your teeth, could break the deal. Laziness, right? Get a job, all right? <laughs> Neediness. Uh, long distance, that was a deal breaker in relationships seven years ago. And then if you had no sense of humor, you just gotta laugh a little bit, that was a deal breaker about seven years ago. The article went on to say, now in, in 2020, in 2020, uh, these were the new deal breakers because they changed you know, over the years. So here they were, opposing views on issues, uh, mask practices and quarantine stance. So if you're in a relationship and you didn't agree on these things, so you're in a romantic relationship and you didn't see eye to eye, there's no more agreeing to disagree. If they saw it differently than you, then it was time to break up. They would ghost you. For the older generation, ghost means that they don't talk to you anymore. They just ghost you. Uh, they're, not, they're not talking. The relationship is over. And I thought, how inconsistent pop culture is with relationship advice. It changes every five to seven years. I guarantee you, if you read an article in Vogue five to seven years from now, there's gonna be a different list of deal-breaking behaviors in relationships. But God, again, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his principles don't change. Well, there was some deal-breaking behaviors going on in a church in the first century. Uh, this church was in a city called uh, Corinth. And we really get this letter that we know as 1 Corinthians uh, from this church. Because Paul had gone to Corinth. It was uh, an important town. It was a port town. Uh, a lot of economics going on. Paul strategically went there. Uh, he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. Spent about a year and a half there. A lot of people came to know Jesus. Uh, they formed a church. And then Paul moves on. Uh, he moves on. He starts starting some other churches. But then he hears that there are some relationship issues in this church in Corinth. There is some behavior that's happening uh, that isn't, isn't good. And so he writes this letter. Uh, today it's known as 1 Corinthians because it was the first letter written to this church. But back then in the first century, it didn't even have a name. It wasn't uh, a 1 Corinthians. It was just a letter that Paul was writing to people that he really cared about, that he knew. And they were struggling with some behavior. So the letter's really broken into five sections. There's five main relationship issues in this church. Uh, the, the, number, the number one issue was people were arguing and fighting over which leader they liked the best. So, you know, if you had multiple pastors on the staff, people were fighting, oh, I like this one better and that one better. And, uh, and then there was some uh, inappropriate sexual relationships happening in the church. Uh, that was an, an issue. Uh, there was an issue over food. People were arguing about what foods you could eat and not eat. And there was uh, arguments over the resurrection and the teaching about the resurrection. And then finally, there was some disagreement uh, over the Sunday gathering, the worship gathering. And this is the scripture, the scripture that we're reading today, we're focusing on today. Uh, this is in that section where Paul is ad addressing this issue in this first century church with, with the worship gathering and, and the deal-breaking behaviors that, that were going on. So I hope that helps you understand this a little better as we read it, because again, this was a letter. Uh, it was meant to be read to a church, probably the whole thing at once, and we're just kind of taking a portion out this morning, and so I really want you to understand the context of, of what's happening here. So with all that in mind, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13.1, uh, this, is, this is what Paul writes. He says, if I speak uh, in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, think about that, uh, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Now, as I read that, what stood out to you? Now, you may say, well, Pastor Dan, you have you know, a phrase highlighted over and over, so I think I know where you're going. But really, when I read that passage of Scripture, 
what has stood out to me, what's always stood out to me is this phrase, but do not have love, but do not have love. Like Paul is talking to this first century church and about this worship gathering and, and the people that are gathering and, and he's saying, listen, there, there's some wonderful experiences that can happen when you gather to worship, but if you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. So what experiences is Paul talking about? So let's go back, okay, let's together, let's go back and look at some of these experiences that he's mentioning. The, the first experience is this. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels. So you have to know uh, the history of the church to know really what Paul's getting at here. Uh, the church was born 50 days after the ascension of Jesus Christ. It was called the day of Pentecost. Penta means 50. 50 days after Christ ascends back into heaven. And on this day, as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit comes. And there's the sound of a mighty rushing wind. The Spirit comes and enables the disciples of Jesus who, they were just ordinary men. They weren't super educated. They weren't special. But the Holy Spirit en enables these Galileans and men to preach the gospel, and they're preaching the gospel with power. Well, at that time, there were a lot of people in the city that were from all over the world, and so they spoke different languages. They didn't speak Galilean, okay? So they were from all over the world, yet they were hearing the gospel from these disciples in their native tongue, in their native language. It was a miracle that was happening. It was an experience that no one had ever forgotten. And so people in this first century church were thinking about this and saying, oh, when we come and gather, we want an experience like that. We want that miracle to happen. And he even mentions this language of angels that we're not going to get into this morning. But the bottom line is people were looking for an experience. They were looking for something very powerful. And Paul says, well, that could happen. But if you don't have love, it doesn't matter. The second experience that he brings up is this gift of prophecy. And prophecy is really the ability to proclaim the word of God in a clear and powerful way. Sometimes it can also mean that you actually predict the future, that God gives you a message for the future and you tell the people. It's quite an experience when someone gives a prophecy. And Paul brings this experience up. And it's also amazing when someone has a faith that can move mountains. There's been situations, experiences in gatherings when people are literally healed from a disease or a sickness, where there's this faith that moves a mountain. And the people in that first century church, I mean, they were looking for that to happen every Sunday. They wanted to see that happen. But Paul says it could happen. But listen, if you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. And then he brings up this third experience. I could give all I possess to the poor, or I could turn my body over to hardships. That's an extreme experience, giving everything that you have. Can you imagine that coming here and selling everything, saying, oh, I'm giving it all. I'm gonna turn my body over to hardships. I'm willing to be a martyr for the Lord. Quite an experience. But Paul says, even that, if you would do that and you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. And see, for Paul, the gospel wasn't just Jesus living and then dying and then raising from the dead. The gospel was more than that. And the people of this church had forgotten what the gospel was really all about. See, they were looking for an experience. But Paul said, no, the gospel isn't just some experience. The gospel is about all of life. The gospel is about everything you do and say and who you are. The gospel is to penetrate everything that we do, including our worship gathering. It's not about a show. It's not about some grand experience. No, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about love. Jesus came and said this, the greatest commandments are this, to love God and to love others. 
So when you gather together, it's not about a show. It's not about an experience. You may have a great experience, but it's really about us as a family of God, loving one another and loving God. It's about us asking, how are you doing? It's about giving someone a hug, giving someone a handshake. It's about doing life together. It's really about caring and loving for each other so much that when people come, they see the love of God. They see the love that we have for each other and they want to come and be a part of what God is doing here. See, people will see through the show. They'll see through the experience. You can't really build relationships on that. I mean, what do you really build relationships on? It's consistent behavior. That's what builds relationships. Paul is talking to this first century church, but I also think he's talking to us today and about our personal relationships. Because many of us, we try to build our relationships on experiences. That's what we try to do. We don't try to build our relationship on consistent behavior. No, we're looking for the experience. I mean, look at our world today. The world says that you can build a relationship on this intense physical experience. Our world is obsessed with sex. I mean, there's these hookup apps, there's pornography, there's all the things that are going on. The world will tell you this, have this physical experience. That's what relationships are all about. And that is a lie. It doesn't work. You can't build a healthy relationship on a physical experience. It's just not the truth. Some people in parenting their kids, they try to build that on experiences. They think, oh, if I can just give my kid the right experience, then they're going to be okay. But parents, it's not about giving your kids the experience. It's about giving your kids you giving your kids you day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade. That should really take some of the pressure off. It's not about, you know, this huge experience. No, they want your love and they want that consistent love. One of the greatest things that my parents have done is they just consistently told me, I love you. I love you. I love you. Parents, they want you. That's what really builds a healthy relationship. You even look at businesses today. You know, some businesses are trying to build their, their, their company on an experience. You know, they might, they might take their team to the high ropes course. You know, I'm gonna take my team to a high ropes course. I'm gonna put them way up in the air, scare them half to death so they get together, right? <laughs> it doesn't work. That's not how you build a company. It might make some memories, Maybe good for a few laughs, a few scares. But listen, you don't build a company culture on an experience. No, it's consistent behavior that builds relationships. That's really what it's all about. And that's why Paul, he writes what the consistent behavior is to be. I mean, Holy Spirit anointed. He writes what the consistent behaviors we should be shooting for in our relationships and in our church and he says this, love is patient. So love defers anger. It doesn't get angry right away. It flips the coin to first to the second half, if you remember that message. It meets people where they are, not where you want them to be. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It's not jealous of people. That's a picture of someone boiling over, like boiling water. You're so envious and jealous of other people. That's not love. It does not boast. It is not proud. You're not a braggart. You're not telling everyone how great you are. It does not dishonor others. That word means to be indecent. Love is never, never indecent towards someone else. It is not self-seeking. Love isn't about us. That's not the behavior we're shooting for. It's not easily angered. It doesn't let people get under your skin real easy. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't have a notepad and write it down every time someone sins or someone messes up. That's not love. That's not a picture of the behavior of love, Paul says. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. In other words, love loves to know reality and not the illusion of reality. The world will give you an illusion of reality. Love will give you the truth. It will tell you what the truth really is. 
It always protects. It always has things under the roof. It's protected. It always trusts. No matter what, it says God has this. No matter what you face, God has this. Love always trusts. It always hopes. Even when it seems hopeless, love never stops hoping. Love always hopes, and it always perseveres. No matter how bad it gets, it stands up under the weight. It stands strong. Love always perseveres. See, Paul Paul, God inspired, Holy Spirit inspired, gives a clear description of the consistent behavior that makes relationships work. And it's all about love. It's all about love. And that's what I want to share with you next that consistency is only possible if your motive is love. Because I know what you're thinking, I know what I'm thinking. It's really hard to be patient on Tuesday. It's easy to be patient in here on Sunday. I mean, we're in church. God's watching, right? We got to be on our best behavior in church, of course. It's easy on Sunday morning when it's all comfortable, but it's not easy on Tuesday. When we were at date night uh, the other week, a young couple sang this song, Love uh, is, 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 is the Tuesday, something like that. Love is the Tuesdays. I love the title of that song because the message of the song was this. Love isn't about these experiences, these high experiences or these great lows. No, love is the Tuesdays. Love is the everyday thing that matters. Why would I be patient on a Tuesday? The only reason could be love. Consistency is only possible if your motive is love. On Tuesday, love is what makes you be patient when you don't feel like it. On Tuesday, love is what hopes when all hope seems to be lost. On Tuesday, love is what perseveres when you don't feel like persevering. On Tuesday, love is what makes Andy put up with me when I'm in a mood. Amen? (laughs) On Tuesday, love is what says no to my flesh when my flesh may want to do something that is indecent. On Tuesday, love is what helps me not say what I want to say when I want to say it. (laughs) Love helps me to do that. On Tuesday, when I feel like bragging and saying, oh, it was my idea, and taking credit and kind of puffing myself up, love is what helps me to not do that. See, on Tuesday, again, when all hope is lost, love is what keeps me hoping. See, love is the motivation behind consistency. If you're gonna be consistent in your relationships, if we're gonna be consistent here as a church, our motive has to be love. I mean, when we come into this place, into this church home, and maybe someone's rubbed us the wrong way, what's gonna help us treat that person with with love? Well, the motive is love. It has to be love. And Paul was telling that first century church, and he's telling us today, Jesus Christ, his motive was love. It's why he came to this earth, why he left heaven, why he died on the cross, why he was in that tomb, why he rose again. It's all because he loved you. And that first century church had forgotten that. They were looking for the experience. They were arguing about it. They were fighting that and said, Paul said, time out. No, 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 no. We gather because our motive is to love one another and to love our God. That's why we're here. Don't you wanna be a part of a church family that really loves one another? I mean, don't you wanna come here and receive love and give love? I mean, that's special. That's what other people would love to be a part of. The last thing I wanna share about consistency is it keeps people coming back. Pastor Dan, this is hard. I mean, I mean, on Tuesday, it's hard. On Wednesday, it's hard. It is hard to be consistent. I'm telling you, it's really difficult. Why would I put forth the effort other than this? It keeps people coming back. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Dan? Well, when I was growing up in the butcher shop, uh, my dad... He had to compete with some, some big box stores. You know, they moved into town, the, the Walmarts and the Giant Eagle, and here's my dad with this little meat business. But we were different than those big box stores because our motive was love. My dad really cared about his customers. He provided a quality product at a fair price with warm customer service. My job was this. I would carry the meat out to the customer's cars. 
See, every customer that came into Hanson's Meats, once they ordered, we would package up their meat, we would carry the meat out to their car. I did that, that was my job. I would put it in their back seat or put it in their trunk, and every time I carried the meat out, after I put it in their car, I would thank them for coming. I would wish them a great day, and they loved it. It was different than the Walmart. It was different than the Giant Eagle. They didn't get that kind of love at those places. In my dad's store, it was nothing special. One of his competitors said, Lee, I've never seen so much meat sold out of a shoebox. It's pretty much what it was. It was a rectangular block building. But do you know why people kept coming back? Because day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade, we carried every order out of that store into that car and said, thanks for being here today. Wish you a great day. And people kept coming back. You see, it's the little things that matter. It's the little things that matter. When people come to this church, they not only need to be greeted, but they need to be sent off saying, have a great week. Have a great day. We love you. We thank you for being here. When people come here and you see someone that looks like they're lost, you need to go up to them. That's your person. Tell them that you're glad that they're here today. Introduce yourself. It's the little things that matter. When someone maybe is struggling with their kids, go up and say, hey, can I help you, right? Be a good neighbor to the people in your church. When someone looks down, maybe they're crying, maybe they're upset, just say, hey, do you wanna share? Do you wanna talk? It's the little things that matter because it's the motive of love that makes the difference. Why would I do any of those things? Because it keeps them coming back. And here's the good news. In this Corinth church, they had blown it. They had missed the mark. They had forgotten that the gospel penetrated every part of life. They were lost. And it's okay if you're lost. It's okay if you've missed the mark with consistency. You're thinking, well, wow, I've missed it as a dad. I've missed it as a mom. I've missed it as a friend. I've missed it as a worker. I've missed it as a boss. I mean, I've just missed it. I haven't been consistent. I really haven't been there. And you feel lost. Well, the good news about anything lost is it can be found. You can find consistency again. You can start finding consistency in your relationships. You can go after it again. And I guarantee if you do that, they will come back. You might be in a relationship. It's struggling right now with your kids, with your spouse, with your friends, with your coworkers. It's lost. I want to give you the answer this morning. It's consistency. You need to get back to what Paul was telling that first century church, what he's telling us this morning, what he's telling us in our personal relationships. It all comes back to motive, a motive of love and consistent behavior that leads to healthy relationships. If you do that, they will come back. Your kids will come back. Your grandkids will come back. Your husband will come back. Your wife will come back. Your team will come back. Your students will come back. Everyone will come back if you deliver the consistent behavior because people want to know, am I loved? Is your mode of love? I mean, do you really care about me? You can be a very imperfect person, but if you're consistent, motivated by love, they'll come back. They'll come back. There's people that have been hurt by churches. You know, the only hope we have of them coming back, love, (laughs) consistently loving them where they are. They'll come back if we keep that up. If we go tell them, you need to get in church. What have you been doing? You've been messing up. They're not gonna come back, I promise you. (laughs) But if you're consistent, motivated by love, they will come back. I want you to know this. Every single Saturday, we pray these four things for Sunday. If you have a friend here today, a guest here today, you can be proud of your church. They've been prayed for. And we pray that every Sunday we have this spirit of celebration. There's joy in the house of the Lord. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that the word would prepare us to go out into the week and that someone would give their life to Christ. Maybe today you feel lost. You don't have the love of Christ in your life. Maybe today you wanna give your life to Christ. You're missing that in your life. I want you to bow your heads right now. If that's you, I wanna give you an opportunity to receive the love of Christ right now. It all starts there. If you ever have hope of being consistent, you have to open the door of your heart to Jesus Christ. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if someone would like to invite the love of Jesus into their life this morning, I want you to raise your hand real quick. Raise your hand, is that you this morning? Would you like to do that? You need the love of God. Raise it high. Is there anyone here? I'll wait just a few more moments. If not, we're gonna move on to the next part, but I wanted to give that opportunity. We've prayed for you today. Is that you? 
Is that you? Is that you? Father, if you're dealing with anyone right now, maybe today they're resisting you. I don't see a hand, so I don't know, but, but God, maybe someone online, they're watching. If that's them, God, I just pray right now, they would pray this prayer, oh God, I need your love. I wanna open the door of my heart to Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive me of my sins. Believe in him as my Lord and Savior. I receive your love, Jesus. Please forgive me. Give me that love that only can come from you. I wanna live for you from now on. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I love you, Jesus. I pray this in your precious name, amen. As we wrap up today, I wanna read this scripture over you one more time. And this is from the message paraphrase. And today, you might need to make a recommitment to consistency in a certain area of love. And so as I read this over you, if, if God puts his finger on something in your life, you know, you haven't been consistent in this area, I want you to be open to allowing God to help you in this area. So hear the word of the Lord. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't uh, love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Now here we go. Let this speak to you. Is there an area? Is there an area you need to grow in here? Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. See, that's the love of Jesus. <laughs> that's the behavior that will make any relationship grow. That's what we're shooting for, church. That's what Paul wanted that first, church, uh, first century church to have. That's what he wants Canton Nazarene Church to have. That's what he wants you to have in your personal relationships with other people. It's not about the experience. It's about consistency. That's what builds relationships. If you're with me, church, say amen. I want you to stand to your feet now. We're about to worship one more time. We talked about, well, what songs did we sing at the end? And I said, well, we're talking about consistency, so let's sing the same one we've sung the last two weeks. It's a powerful song about Jesus. It's a prayer over you. So Jesus, as we lift this song to you, as we pray to you, as we sing to you one more time, God, I pray you receive this as a fragrant offering. Help us, God, to be consistent. Help us to be motivated by love. Help us not to come and look for some experience, but come to look and love others the way you've loved us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. If this message helped you, share it with someone you know. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for one of our worship experiences. Go to cantnazarene.com for times and more information. Hey, thanks for being a part of our virtual community.